everyone, welcome back to Tenipoi Actual Speaking. My name is Jennifer Clyde. It's wonderful to have you joining me. Well, as I did mention, it's lesson five, and today we'll be talking about your dreams. Of course, we dream at night when we sleep, but we also do have wishes and hopes in achieving something in the future, and that is also a dream. So I'm sure we all have dreams, or don't you? The concept of a dream is something we hope to achieve in the future. So we all may have small dreams from traveling or wanting to purchase something to even having bigger dreams. And as the saying goes, everyone, dream big if you are going to dream of becoming something. Now, it's important to strategize your plan, especially when it comes to achieving a certain goal. I'll tell you what that plan is. It's called a five-year plan or even a 10-year plan. So you're gonna have to stick around the end of our program to find out about this five-year plan, all right? Okay, then let's begin today's lesson with our warm-up section. Welcome back everyone. Are you ready to start our warm-up section? Let's do it by taking a look at the five W's and how, as always, all right? So think about the five W's and how. First of all, we have who. Now, we are talking about dreams today, but perhaps you can brainstorm with these cues. Now, who? Did you or do you dream of becoming? Now, if you want to become something, you may want to become a certain kind of person, right? And who do you look up to? Who do you respect? Who do you want to be like? And also, who inspired you? Who inspired you to have that dream of yours? Let's move on, take a look at what. Now, what kind of desires do you have? What kind of wishes and hopes and desires do you have? Aspirations is another word for desire. Aspiration is a strong desire to achieve something. So next time, maybe instead of saying, my hope is, my dream is, my desire is to so-and-so, try using words such as my aspiration or my aspirations are so-and-so, okay? Now, these are very similar words as well. Ambition, determination, what are you driven by? Also, what are you fascinated by? What are you attracted by or excited by, okay? And finally, what do you fantasize about? In other words, what do you dream about, okay? Let's move on to what once more. Now, what were or are your dreams? Let's focus on the dreams and this part of the what, okay? So, you may have had a certain dream when you were younger and you may have a dream right now at this point. So, what were or are your dreams? Let's talk about childhood dreams as well. You can talk about dreams that you had as a child when you were growing up. Or what about, what kind of steps have you taken to achieve your dreams? Now, what did you do to achieve, to make that dream come true so far? You can also talk about what you were driven by, what was the driving force, what kept you going and going and going. Also, what factors led you toward your dreams? Now, what are the most important things or the factors that helped you get closer and closer to your dreams? Think about these things, okay? So let's move on and brainstorm some more. Now, we're talking about dreams once again. We can talk about when, right? So when, since when did you have this dream? Or when did you change your mind? As I did mention earlier, you may have had a dream when you were in elementary school, high school, but now you have a different dream. So talk about when you changed your mind about your dream. Of course, you can also talk about when will you or did you achieve your dreams or goals? Did you achieve your goals or dreams? Or when do you plan to be there or get there to that point? Let's see where. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Hmm, so think, 10 years later, or maybe five years later, what do you think you'll be doing? Where do you think you will be in the future? Talk about that as well. And why? Why do you aspire to be? Aspire to be is, of course, aspiration, a strong desire. So what, uh, why do you aspire to be? Why do you want to become 
this that you dream of? Or why do you aspire to become? Be and become are quite similar, so just keep that pattern in mind. And let's move on to our final how, okay? How will you pursue your dreams? How will you continue on with your dreams? How will you follow your dreams? Talk about that. And how do you feel about your desires? These are some things you can talk about when talking about your dreams, okay? So practice brainstorming some more on your own and let's move on everyone. You know, I'm starting grad school in a couple of days. Really? Yeah, and I was thinking about the process that it took me to get there, like the application mm -hmm. and stuff. And there was one question on the application that asked, what is your dream? So I've been really interested in this topic, and I wanted to ask you, Peter, what is your dream, or what was your dream when you were growing up? Well, I would have to say that my dreams now and my dreams then are very different. Okay. Um, when I was young, I, I was fascinated by, you know, normal things like astronauts and policemen. Um, so maybe I dreamt to be a, a policeman or a, a fireman. Okay. But uh, as I grew up, I started getting interested in other things, and uh, I, I, I got interested in science. Oh, that's cool. So did you pursue that dream of maybe becoming a scientist? What steps did you take, maybe? Of course. I started studying on my own. I, I got inspired by my teachers in high school, mm -hmm. and then I applied to university uh, in astrophysics. That's awesome. Uh, you know, as for me, actually, I always wanted to be a singer when I was younger. Really? Yeah, I always aspired to be someone like Whitney Houston, or even <laughs> Michael Jackson, because he danced so well. Really? Yeah. yeah, so some steps that I took was I did take dancing lessons and singing lessons, but it didn't work out in the end. <laughs> I don't want to be a singer anymore. So what's your dream now? My dream now is to work for some kind of humanitarian organization. Really? Yes. I aspire to be someone like Hillary Clinton, I guess, or maybe even Oprah. Okay. Yeah, those are my goals. Now, today, are you that scientist that you dream to be? No, life got in the way and things changed. I got inspired by different things uh, as time went by. Okay. Um, and I, I started um, writing poetry. And, you know, lo and behold, I became a writer. Oh, so do you say that that is your dream today? Yes, I would have to say that's my dream today. I'm, I'm living my dream. I'm glad you're living your dream. How did you enjoy today's actual talk between Peter and Rachel? We had a new face to introduce to you today. That was Rachel, everyone. Now, Peter and Rachel talked about their dreams. They began by talking about what their childhood dreams were. For Rachel, she said she wanted to become a singer when she was younger, but her dreams changed. What about Peter? What did Peter say? He said that as a young boy, when he was little, he dreamt of becoming someone like um, a policeman or a fireman, or he even dreamed about astronauts as well. Let's take a look at the, at the talk line by line. First of all, you know, they got it ready got the conversation going and Rachel said, I'm starting grad school in a couple of days. Now grad here, you may all know, but just in case, grad school here, grad is short for graduate, graduate school. Of course, in Korean, we would call it Taehagwon, right? So I'm starting grad school in a couple of days. And then she says, I was thinking about the process that it took me to get there meaning get yeah, there, meaning grad school, like the application and stuff. And then she begins by asking the important question. She says, there was one question on the application that asked, what is your dream? So that's our important question for the day. What is your dream? So she asks, and I wanted to ask you, Peter, what is your dream? And what was your dream when you were growing up? So she's asking him two questions. What is your dream now? And what was your dream as a young boy? Let's find out what they said. Now, what is your blank or what is your blank? We do have two choices here. When you're asking somebody a question about their dreams, you could perhaps say, what is your ambition? Okay, this is another way of asking about someone's dream. Or what is your determination? What 
are you willing to do, okay? What do you have strong desires to become or for? And then perhaps you can answer by saying, my ambition in life is to be successful, okay? Or a nurse or a professor. So in this case, you can talk about what kind of person you want to be and also a profession. All right, let's move on. What are your aspirations? This is very similar, okay? Here we have what is your, here we have what are your aspirations. As I did mention, aspiration is basically a strong desire, okay, uh, in order to achieve something. You can also ask what are your desires, keep in mind we've got an S there, and what are your wishes, okay? What are, always followed by S's. Okay, let's continue on. What were your childhood dreams? What were your dreams when you were growing up? Is a good question, but this is simple and to the point. What were your childhood dreams? What were your dreams when you were little? Moving on. Now, Peter says, I would have to say that my dreams now and my dreams then are very different. This is a wonderful sentence because he's talking about how his dreams have changed. So, my dreams now and my dreams then are very different. When I was young, I was fascinated by normal things like astronauts and policemen. So these are things that interested him. And then he says, so I dreamt to be a policeman or a fireman. Excuse me, there should have been a, pa a, a pause there. So it's, so I dreamt to be a policeman or a fireman. This is a dream that he had as a little boy, all right? And then he says, but as I grew up, as I grew up, as I got older, I started getting interested in other things and I got interested in science. So that is what he is talking about. He's talking about what he got interested in as he got older. So let's check out some more patterns. You can say, my dreams now and my dreams then are very different. Okay, keep that pattern in mind. Another one, growing up, I was fascinated by what? This meaning, when I was little, scientists or ballerinas or basketball players. This is a pattern that you can keep in mind when talking about a dream that you may have had when you were a lot younger, okay? Growing up, I wanted to become someone like scientists or ballerinas or basketball players, all right? And then also, as a child, I wanted to be just like someone. As a child, as a little girl, as a little boy, when I was young, okay, try using as a child. This expression is very good as well. You can say, I wanted to be just like, I don't know, uh, my mother, my father, or a famous person. You could also talk about maybe your personal hero as well. You wanted to be just like that person. And finally, we have, since when? Since college or since my 20s, since my teens, since my high school years or since two years ago. We're talking about maybe a year ago, two years ago, and then you can say, I was determined to be or become successful. Now, this sentence especially means since that point in time, you have had the same dream and you still have that dream, okay? So talk about since when you had that certain dream. Here we have two more for you. I started getting interested in other things. This is what Peter said. So this meaning what? My dreams changed, right? You got more interested in other things. And finally, you can say I became more absorbed, fascinated, or even engrossed in music. So say, for example, Peter said he was interested in astronauts, policemen, and firemen, but as he grew up, as he grew up and got older, he became more absorbed, fascinated, or engrossed in something, okay? Always remember, in something. In this case, absorbed and engrossed pretty much mean the same thing. You're so into something, you're very interested in it, okay? and also fascinated means you're very excited about it as well. Okay then everyone, those were the expressions to keep in mind when talking about your dreams, especially as you were growing up. So keep that in mind and let's take a listen one more time. 
You know, I'm starting grad school in a couple of days. Really? Yeah, and I was thinking about the process that it took me to get there, like the application mm -hmm. and stuff. And there was one question on the application that asked, what is your dream? So I've been really interested in this topic, and I wanted to ask you, Peter, what is your dream, or what was your dream when you were growing up? Well, I would have to say that my dreams now and my dreams then are very different. Okay. Um, when I was young, I, I was fascinated by, you know, normal things like astronauts and policemen. Um, so maybe I dreamt to be a, a policeman or a, a fireman. Okay. But uh, as I grew up, I started getting interested in other things, and uh, I, I, I got interested in science. Oh, that's cool. So... Now, did that help you understand the dialogue or the talk between Peter and Rachel a little bit better? I hope it did. Let's move on and check out what else they talked about. Now, Rachel says, so did you pursue that dream of becoming a scientist? Remember, Peter said that as he grew up or as a child, he wanted to become a scientist. So Rachel asks, did you pursue, did you follow that dream, okay, to become a scientist? And then she says, what steps did you take? There are steps that we can take in order to accomplish a goal or a dream, right? Peter explains, I started, he's talking about what he did to pursue that dream of becoming a scientist. He says, I started studying on my own. I got inspired by my teachers in high school, and then I applied to university in astrophysics. So he's talking about a major related to a type of science, right? Now he says, I got inspired by someone. Remember, as we were brainstorming cues, we talked about who inspired you, who inspired you. Let's move on. Now, uh, Rachel says, as for me, actually, I always wanted to be a singer when I was younger. I always wanted to be something, meaning I wanted to be this for a very long time, okay? And then she says, I always aspired, okay? I always hoped, had a strong desire to be someone like Whitney Houston or even Michael Jackson because, she's adding the reason, because he danced so well. Remember, she said she wanted to become a singer. So she says, so some steps that I took was, I did take dancing lessons, okay? Now the did here is, you're wondering, why is it did there? Because she is stressing the fact that she did something, okay? I'll read it for you. Some steps that I took was, I did take dancing lessons. I did sing. I did practice, okay? You're stressing the fact that you did something. So she took dancing lessons and singing lessons, but it didn't work out in the end. Meaning what? Uh, well, the results were, were not so good. And she says, I don't want to be a singer anymore. Meaning she changed her mind about her dream. I don't want to be a singer anymore, okay? Now, moving on, let's check out some patterns you can keep in mind when talking about your dreams. Let's see, my parents, talk about who inspired you, okay? My parents, my professor inspired me, or the story of Steve Jobs inspired me. The story of somebody inspired me, really touched me, and that's why I have this dream. Moving on, another one is, I have always aspired to become the best in my field. Remember, Rachel said, I always wanted to be so-and-so. You can say, I always aspired to become. I have always aspired to become something. I wanted to become the best in my field for a very, very long time, okay? Now, another one, I aspire to become someone like somebody. Give an example. Like Rachel said, you can say, I aspire to become someone like uh, Oprah Winfrey, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson. Talk about who you want to be like. Also, I aspire to reach a destination in life, a point in life, always moving in a forward direction. I think you can use this sentence in almost any talk about uh, a dream, perhaps, okay? You're talking about how strong-willed you are. So aspire to reach a destination in life. A point in life, always moving in a forward direction, meaning you're 
always trying and trying and trying, okay, and not giving up. Now, although people say that life is a journey, not a destination, I think this is a great sentence to make use of. Dialogue once again. Now, Peter says, so what's your dream now? Remember, she said she doesn't want to be a singer anymore. Uh, Rachel says, my dream now is to work for some kind of humanitarian organization. So, if you want to work for a certain company or an organization, you can say it is to work for a kind of whatever, whatever organization or company. So, in other words, she wants to help poor people, the welfare of people, okay, and save lives. And she gives examples such as, I aspire to be someone like Hillary Clinton or even Oprah. Those are my goals. Mention your goals. Now today, are you that scientist that you dream to be? And Peter said what? No, life got in the way and things changed. Life interfered. Life got in the way and things changed, all right? Now moving on. I got inspired by different things as time went by and I started writing poetry. He's talking about what he eventually started to do, writing poetry, and lo and behold, okay, and lo and behold, I became a writer. What's lo and behold? A common spelling mistake people make when uh, writing lo and behold is L-O-W and behold, but this is the correct spelling. It's lo and behold, basically means look, see? People say this to grab people's attention, okay? So it means, hey, listen, I've got something to tell you. He says, lo and behold, I became a writer. Now, and also Peter says, that's my dream today. I'm living my dream, meaning it's become a reality. I'm living my dream. And Rachel says, I'm glad you're living your dream, okay? Now, before we listen to the whole thing again, let's take a look at some more. Life got in the way, as I did mention, Get in the way means to interfere, to disturb. So life or reality got in the way. It wasn't easy. So things changed. What more do we have? My dream now, my dream today is. Talk about your dream that you have at the present. My ultimate goal or my ultimate aim at present is. This is another important pattern you can make use of and I've materialized my wishes or goals, desires, or even dreams. Materialize basically means to actually do something about it, make use of, okay? And another one we have for you is, I'm dedicating myself entirely, meaning 100%. Dedicate something. You're giving it your time and effort. You're putting in your time and effort to your dreams. Try this, let's practice together. I'm dedicating myself entirely to my dreams. One more time, I'm dedicating myself entirely to my dreams. Now, let's take a look at two more. Lo and behold, I'm living my dream. Lo and behold, I'm living my dream. And finally, the change of mind changed my life. Make use of this one as well. I really like this one. The change of mind changed my life. This is a saying that people often, uh, I guess, mention. The change of mind. As I changed my mind, that changed my world or my life. So keep these patterns all in mind as well. That was a lot of material, right, everyone? Okay, now take a deep breath and let's listen to the talk between Peter and Rachel one more time. You know, I'm starting grad school in a couple of days. Really? Yeah, and I was thinking about the process that it took me to get there, like the application mm -hmm. and stuff. And there was one question on the application that asked, what is your dream? So I've been really interested in this topic, and I wanted to ask you, Peter, what is your dream, or what was your dream when you were growing up? Well, I would have to say that my dreams now and my dreams then are very different. Okay. Um, when I was young, I, I was fascinated by, you know, normal things like astronauts and policemen. Um, so maybe I dreamt to be a, a policeman or a, a fireman. Okay. But uh, as I grew up, I started getting interested in other things and uh, I, I, I got interested in science. Oh, that's cool. So did you pursue that dream of maybe becoming a scientist? What steps did you take maybe? Of course, I started studying on my own. I, I 
got inspired by my teachers in high school, mm -hmm. and then I applied to university uh, in astrophysics. That's awesome. Uh, you know, as for me, actually, I always wanted to be a singer when I was younger. Really? Yeah, I always aspired to be someone like Whitney Houston <laughs> or even Michael Jackson because he danced so well. Really? Yeah. yeah, so some steps that I took was I did take dancing lessons and singing lessons, but it didn't work out in the end. <laughs> I don't want to be a singer anymore. So what's your dream now? My dream now is to work for some kind of humanitarian organization. Really? Yes. I aspire to be someone like Hillary Clinton, I guess. Or maybe even Oprah. Okay. Yeah, those are my goals. Now, today, are you that scientist that you dream to be? No. Life got in the way and things changed. I got inspired by different things uh, as time went by. Okay. Um, and I, I started um, writing poetry. And, you know, lo and behold, I became a writer. Oh, so do you say that that is your dream today? Yes, I would have to say that's my dream today. I'm, I'm living my dream. I'm glad you're living your dream. Hmm. Now, it's time for us to take a look at today's idiom. And once again, our topic for the day is talking about your dreams. So let's find out what kind of idiom is related to a dream. Now there's this idiom and it is a dream come true. Now come true means what? Come true means to become a reality. A dream come true, I'll tell you what it means later on. But first of all, a sample example using a dream come true is my vacation to Bora Bora was a dream come true. Actually, a trip to Bora Bora is a dream that I have. I really, really want to go there. I hope that someday I can say this. So one more time, my vacation to Bora Bora was a dream come true. My vacation to Hawaii was a dream come true. Now, a dream come true basically means this. The definition is, hmm, in Korean it is 실현된 희망의 꿈. Okay, wow. 꿈이 실현됐어요 라고 할 때, you can say, wow, it was a dream come true. So, it basically means something that has been longed for, desired for a long time, and it has happened as hoped for. So, if I say, my vacation to Bora Bora was a dream come true, it means that I have always dreamed of going to Bora Bora, and finally, I went there, and it was, wow, like a dream. The dream came true, so it was a dream come true. Another example is, that was a dream come true wedding. What would that mean in this case? It means that I maybe fantasized about a certain kind of wedding for a very, very long time, and I got married, and the wedding ceremony was so beautiful. It was just like I imagined. It was just the wedding I wanted to have. In that case, I can say uh, that was a dream come true wedding. Now, one more, uh, just to quickly mention before we say uh, goodbye to this segment is dream on. That's another idiom that's related to dreams. What do you think that means? Hey, dream on, dream on. I think in Korean, the closest expression is kumke. When someone says that they want to do something that sounds almost impossible, you can say, yeah, dream on, meaning 그래, 그래, 꿈게. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. And that wraps it up for today's idiom. Describe your dreams in detail. What did you want to be growing up? What have you done or what are you doing to fulfill your dreams? Talk about the steps you have taken. When I was young, I wanted to become years old, and there was nobody who taught me English alphabet. Uh, but I found myself being intrigued by the English alphabet. So whenever I saw some kinds of English words on the boxes of Cheetos, chocolate, or candy, I was very curious about those English combination of English combinations between the, their letters and sounds. And when I was high school student, my English teacher encouraged me to have a dream to become an English teacher. And she also told me about some advantages to become an English teacher. Like that um, I could actually enhance my English skills while teaching English to students. Because 
Only if I am perfect in speaking or reading English, then I think I thought that I could be qualified to teach English to children. And that is actually why I chose English education as my major at university. And to become a very nice teacher, I have also experienced as a uh, teacher at summer camp who, are, who is teaching English to children. Uh, through those several times of English teaching experiences, I thought, I think that um, I could learn how to become a very nice and kind English teacher. I love our actual interviews and I do want to say thank you to all of our interviewees out there for such wonderful jobs. Um, I thank you for your time and your effort, okay? I'm sure it's not easy, but yeah, we do have a great example for our viewers to practice with, so let's take a look. Now, today's question was, hmm, now, the describe in detail about your dreams and what did you want to be growing up? What did you want to be as a child? What have you done or what are you doing to fulfill your dream? And talk about the steps you have taken. Step one, step two, step three, four, five, and on. So talk about the things you have done to get closer to achieving your dreams or goals or aim in life. Let's take a look. Now we have some great points. In the interview, there was a point where he said, that is why I chose English education as my major in university. He talked about becoming a very, very nice uh, teacher, I guess, right? So he said, well, well, that was why I chose English education as my major in university. But uh, I didn't really quite catch it, but it somehow sounded like at university to me. I wasn't sure, but the correct form would be in university, okay? So one more time, that is why I chose English education as my major in university. He's talking about why he chose a certain major and what steps that he has taken to get closer to achieving that goal. Another one is, when I was a high school student, my English teacher encouraged me, gave me hope, or he or she motivated me to have a dream to become an English teacher. So yes, talk about who inspired you, who encouraged you. In this case, it was an English teacher in high school. Now also one point I do want to mention is when I was high school student was what our interviewee said, but to be correct, you should say a high school student, okay? When I was a high school student, my English teacher encouraged me, inspired me to become an English teacher. Wonderful job there. Let's take a look at some oopses. The first oops is to become an English teacher, I have also experienced as a teacher at summer camp who is teaching English to children. Now the structure of the sentence, it's not very clear and it's not to the point. So for example, to become an English teacher, I have also experienced as a teacher at summer camp who is teaching English to children. It's kind of confusing, right? It's not easy to understand. So perhaps you can say, to become an English teacher, I have experienced blah, blah, blah. In this case, teaching English to who? To children at summer camps. This sounds a lot smoother, right? So one more time, to become an English teacher, what did you do? I've experienced teaching English to children at summer camps. Okay, which would you prefer? I would say this one's better, okay? Let's take a look at one more. Uh-oh, number two is, I found myself being intrigued by the English alphabet. Being intrigued, okay. Now I would say a better way to say this is, I found myself intrigued. So not being, but I found myself intrigued by the English alphabet. Okay, and then we do have some more choices you can choose from. You could also say, I was intrigued by the English alphabet, okay? So instead of saying being intrigued, I found myself intrigued by something, or I was intrigued by something, or I was intrigued to is also possible. I was intrigued to, but then again, 
you would have to say a verb here. Learn more about the English alphabet. Okay, so these were just uh, minor mistakes, but do keep in mind that there are better ways of saying this in an actual interview that you might have to have sometime in the future. So I do want to say once again, job well done, and that is a wrap for today's actual interview. Well, time is almost up for today's lesson. I hope you found it to be quite helpful. I hope it does, whether you're talking with a friend about your dreams or, well, when you actually have an interview and you have to talk about your dreams. I hope that these patterns and today's actual talk and interview will help you out as well. Now, we all have dreams, as I mentioned in the beginning of our program. Some people have smaller dreams. Some people have bigger dreams. I did mention a five-year plan, remember? Strategize how you are going to achieve your dreams or goals. And I said it's helpful to have a plan, right? Now, a plan is definite much more definite than just a dream. So what I meant by strategizing and making a plan, perhaps a five-year plan is, now write down, in one year, I will. In six months, I'll do this. So basically, write an outline of the things that you will do or have to do to achieve your goal in five years. If you're thinking, oh no, five years is too short, then make a 10-year plan. Perhaps say, this year, I'm going to do this. In the second year, I'm going to accomplish this. In the third year and fourth year. So write down the details of what you can do to actually accomplish your dreams. Set a two-year plan, a five-year plan, or even a 10-year plan. And another good example is, now if time permits, share your dreams with a partner, with a friend. Talk about your dreams and have your friend or partner listen to exactly what you said and have him or her ask you questions about your dreams. And perhaps you can exchange advice as well, okay? So this is also great practice. First of all, for your own good, write a plan and also share that plan with someone. Listen carefully, ask questions and answer the questions and why not give advice if you do have time, all right? All right, everyone, that pretty much brings us to an end. Next time, we'll be talking about hmm, your hero. So think about who your hero is. Who do you want to be like? I guess it could be very similar to today's dream topic, but think about who your hero is, and we'll talk about that. Now, I do want to thank our viewers for taking part and for supporting our program, and most of all, me, by posting up a lot of our messages and comments on our homepage. Keep it going, and I will try to get to your questions, your comments, as quickly or as much as possible. And if you do have any topics you want to talk about on our show, feel free to post them up as well, okay? Any ideas are welcome as well. Okay, everyone, that is a wrap for today. I'll see you again next time. Until then, take care and bye for now.